Hi guys, it's George. Alright, so in this video we're going to be going over some sample calculations for the heat exchanger line. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so let me draw a heat exchanger. If I can do this. And something like this. And let's see. Something like that. A little bit longer and something like that. All right, and we can't forget the arrows. So this flow is going this way, and this flow is going that way, making this a counter flow system. Counter flow. Okay, now what do we know about this system? We are given the diameter. Diameter is 0 0.0095 meters. We're given the total length, and this is 1.32 meters. And uh, this diameter, by the way, is the outer diameter of this inner tube. So, let's see. So if this is DO and that is D in, we're going to be using this guy. We're going to be using this diameter, which is the outer diameter of this inner tube. Okay. Now the volumetric flow rate you should have in your data, and when I did it, I got for hot, I got two liters per minute. Liters per minute which translates to 3.33 times 10 to the minus 5 meters cubed per second. And volumetric flow rate cold, which was 1 liter per minute, which will just be half this, which is 1.67 times 10 to the minus 5 meters cubed per second. Okay, what else do we know? Okay, I have T hot in, which is 53.1 degrees Celsius. T hot out, which is 45.4 degrees Celsius. T cold in, which is 23.6 degrees Celsius, and T cold out, she got 42.6 degrees Celsius. All right, and now what are we being asked for? They want the overall heat transfer coefficient, the number of thermal units, and the heat exchanger efficiency for a counterflow heat exchanger. All right. So you want overall heat transfer coefficient, number of thermal units, and heat exchanger efficiency. So all these are unknowns, and we would like to know what these are. Those are question marks, by the way. Okay, so now we have stated the problem. Now let's go ahead and do stuff so we can get these answers. So let's go ahead and clear all this. And let's use this equation which is given to us. This giant equation. We're going to use this to get our heat transfer. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's write the equation now, which is this mass flow rate of the hot times CP of the hot times T hot in minus T hot, yeah, T hot out. That whole thing equals cold times CP cold. 
times t cold out minus t cold in and it makes sense that these two would equal each other since it's a heat exchanger all right so we can use either one we can use the hot section of the equation or the cold section i'm going to use the hot section but it really doesn't matter okay so what do we have we have t hot in and we have t hot out but i don't think we have cp hot and we don't have the mass flow rate hot so let's go ahead and find these two so that we can find q so the first thing we're going to need to do to get the CP is find our average temperature. So T average is equal to, so this is equal to the hot water inlet, hot water inlet minus the cold water inlet. over two, which is just saying T hot in minus T cold in on two. Okay, so what are those? This is 53.1 minus 45.4 on two, so I get T average of 49.25 which I'm gonna round up to 50 just to make it simpler because on the tables everything goes by increments of ten so this is just really close and it's fine all right let me clear all this okay now looking at my tables I'm gonna look for the the CP of water at 50 degrees Celsius and I get 4181 joules per kilogram Celsius this is for this is CP hot but CP doesn't really change for the, the hot and cold so this is roughly equivalent to CP cold so now we have CP hot, but we still need our mass flow rate hot. So let's do that. So mass flow rate hot is equal to, we're gonna use the trusty old rho AV. Rho AV, which is the same thing as this. And the density of water, we're gonna say is a thousand kilograms per meter cubed all right so mass flow rate hot is equal to 1000 times 3.33 times 10 to the minus 5 so you just move over the decimal place three times so it's 3.33 times 10 to the minus 2 and we're gonna get mass flow rate cold as well because we're going to need that and I already know I just have to move it over three spots times 10 to the minus 5 move it over three spots 1.67 times 10 to the minus 2 so now we have mass flow rate hot and mass flow rate cold which we're going to use later but right now we need this one so let's go ahead and use it now going back to the equation we were using earlier we had this, mass flow rate hot, times CP hot, T hot in minus T, T hot out. Okay, so let's do that. So this is 3.33 times 10 to the minus 2. 2 times CP hot which was 4181 T hot in is 53.1 and T hot out is 45.4 
that gives me a Q of 1072.05. All right, so now we have Q. Well, what we're looking for is the overall heat transfer coefficient. So what formula are gonna be used for that? So let's go ahead and look, and it's right here. So let's write that down. Let me clear this actually. Okay. So this formula says that the heat transfer rate is equal to the overall heat transfer coefficient times the surface area times delta TLM, the log mean, the log mean temperature. Okay. So we have this, we just calculated this. We are looking for this. The surface area we have, because that's just, this is just pi dl. We have the length of the diameter and we have pi. So this one's done. But this one, this one requires a little bit more work. So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, why are we using this log mean temperature? Why are we just using an average of the temperature? The reason for that is because the way the temperature varies, it does it does not vary linearly. So, if it varied like this, so this is T in, and this is T exit. If it varied like that, we could just use an average and be somewhere in the middle. But our temperature varies more like that, and because of that, we have to use the log mean temperature. So log mean temperature is equal to this formula, delta T1 minus delta T2 over natural log of delta T1 over delta T2. And delta T1 is T hot in minus T cold out and delta T2 is equal to T hot out minus T cold in. And for this, I have 53.1 minus 42.6. And this I have 45.4 minus 23. 0.6, which is roughly 10.5 and 21.8. All right. Now let's plug in these numbers into this thing and get our log mean temperature. So this is T1, which is 10.5 minus T2, which is 21.8 over the natural log of 10.5 over 21.8. And this gives me a log mean temperature of 15.47. Okay. So now we have this, we have this, and we have this. So in theory, we already have our overall heat transfer coefficient. So let's go ahead and grab that. Okay. So I'm going to write down my equation one more time. And this is, we already know our heat transfer rate, so this is 1072.05. This is equal to U times pi times D times L, 1.32, times 15.47. And solving for U, I get 1758.77 watts per meter squared degree Celsius. That is one of our answers. All right, let me go ahead and clear this. So we have our overall heat transfer coefficient. The next thing we're going to try to find is our 
efficiency. So this, there's a formula for this. <clears throat> and the one I have is Q over Q max. Now we have Q, but what's this Q max then? All right, so Q max as shown here, where is it? Is our C min times T hot n minus T C n. And what is C min? C min is the smaller of CH and CC. All right, so let me go ahead and explain that. Okay, now we said that Q max is equal to C min times T hot n minus T cold n and C min smaller of CH and CC. So C hot and C cold. Now C hot is simply mass flow rate of the hot times the CP of the hot. And CC is simply the mass flow rate of the cold times CP of the cold. And whichever of these two is lower, that is going to be our C min. Okay, now we have these already. This is 3.33 times 10 to the minus 2. And this is 1.67 times 10 to the minus 2. Our CP is 41.81. And since CP hot equals CP cold, this is also 41.81. So I get for C hot 139.2 and 69.6. And these are watts per degree Celsius and since this is lower that is our semen which goes here okay. oh sorry this was actually this was actually an 8 69.8 alright so we just concluded that C min is equal to 69.8 and now we can plug this in here to get our Q max. Let's do that. Okay, so our Q max is equal to C, C min, which is 69.8, times T hot in, which is 53.1, minus T cold in, which is 23.6. And this gives me 2059.1. So that's our Q max. And our efficiency is just our heat transfer rate over our overall heat transfer rate max maximum heat transfer rate and this is 1072.05 over 2059.1 which is 52 percent that's our efficiency that's our second answer now we have our heat transfer coefficient, overall heat transfer coefficient, and we have our efficiency. The last thing we need to do is find our number of thermal units, which is our overall heat transfer coefficient times the surface area times C min. All right, and I think we have all of this. So this is 1758.77. This is pi times 0 0.0095 times 1.32, which is just pi dl. And our C min, we got 69.8. So our answer for number of thermal units is 0 0.993. And that is our number of thermal units. And that is it for this video. And I will see you guys on the next one.